Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Getting Started with Options. My name is Barbara Armstrong. I am a coach with Schwab. Delighted to be with you this morning. So if you are new to the world of trading options, let me tell you one of the things that appeals to me about gaining an understanding. In 2008 and 9, I had delegated um, the management of my um, my financial investments to someone else. And, and like most people in the market got clobbered. And I knew there was a way to make money when the market or a particular stock was falling. I just didn't know how. And so I was actively looking for education so that I could become more informed and I could manage my own assets. And in 2011, I found it. And so I am actually a product of this education. Today, we're going to talk about something called long puts, which, you know, is trader speak for buying a put. And when we buy a put, it it does well if the stock or the market goes down. And to me, one of the things that is really appealing about options is you've got this big kit bag of incredibly powerful tools in options. And in this series, we're gonna talk about 10 of them over the next three months, but some work really well when the market's going up, some work beautifully when the market's going down, and some work beautifully when the market's going sideways. And so it doesn't matter what the market is doing. If we're good at forecasting, um, options can be a powerful tool. So today we're looking to the downside. Um, you know, we're going to talk about a, a little bit about what's going on in the market overall. But we've got a pile of people with us here who are, are bringing the chat to life. And I want to thank you for being here live and for being so participatory. So to John the Noble Savage and Kevin and AP514 and Krishna and Kim and um, Jack and Rick and Robert and Ambrose, who's here for the first time live, and, and the rest of the gang, thank you all for being here. We also have Lee Bull with us. He brings a wealth of experience with him. So if you have questions, don't hesitate to ask. Um, and between Lee and I, hopefully we've got answers for you. So um, also know that if you're watching this in the archives, as thousands of people do, you too have a voice. And so if you've got a question or if you love the webcast, you can just type something into the comments below. I respond to those on a daily basis. So I'll get back to you relatively quickly on that. The third way for me to be able to reach out to you and you to me is through the world of X, formerly known as Twitter. Um, and so my handle, Barb Armstrong CS for Charles Schwab, Lee's handle, Lee Bowl, B O H L C S. I'm sure he'll type that into the chat. And, and we're posting content on a daily basis that we think you will find interesting and informative. And so it's just another free resource for you to potentially take advantage of. Okay, so let's get right down to business. Know that options carry a high level of risk and are not suitable for all investors. When we buy a put, which is what we're going to talk about today, how much could we lose? We could lose the entire thing. So if you want to trade options with Schwab, you have to apply for option trading privileges. Not all will qualify. There are transaction fees associated with trading options as well. You want to be aware of those and know that all investing involves risk, including the risk of loss. We place example trades in every single class that I teach. When we do that, though, these are for example purposes only. We use the paper money platform on Thinkorswim, which is a brilliant place to learn. It's a brilliant place to hone your skills in becoming more confident and competent in, in mastering and trading a particular strategy. It also is a great place to learn how to navigate the platform. OK, so um, I just wanted to kind of put that out there. So know that uh, um, today what we're going to talk about is, is buying puts, but we have a 12-week rotation in this class. So next week we're going to get into covered calls, and then we're going to get into cash-secured puts. And after that, we'll look at long verticals and then short verticals and protective puts. And then we'll go back to the beginning of the, of the rotation. So today is all about buying puts and and what that really what we're getting ourselves into when we buy a put and then why we might consider using this strategy and why some uh, traders might find this appealing we're going to look at potential 
entry signals. We're going to look at um, an appropriate expiration date and why we might choose which expiration date. And we're going to look at strike prices. We're going to discuss trade management and some exit strategies. And then we're going to place you know, at least one example trade. So that's what's on the menu for today. Now, just before we get started, one of the questions that I was asked was, is there a way to get, you know, to show how to set up a chart? Like I have my chart set up and um, absolutely there is. I have recorded a couple of trade management mini sessions and if you like one of the things you'll want to do is subscribe to the Trader Talks uh, channel. This is part of the Trader Talks webcast from Schwab Coaching on YouTube. And this is where, you know, if you go to home, you can see that, you know, you can join the webcast from here. If you come to playlists. And there should be a third one posted today. So this is we, we call this trade management mini sessions. But the first things I wanted to do was to show you how to customize a thinkorswim chart. And what I used as an example was how I made my chart look the way it did. The second one is how to customize a watch list and then how to link a watch list to a chart or to your trade tab, that kind of thing. There's a third one and that's on how to customize the monitor tab. And you should see that one probably by the end of the day today. And it will just be in here under this trade management mini sessions. Also, if we come back here, Brent Moores is creating, it's called Using Thinkorswim. And so he's creating a bunch of short videos on just how to place a market order versus a limit, bracket orders, that kind of thing. And you can see like all of these are under 10 minutes long. So this is just an additional resource that you might wanna take advantage of. I just wanted to answer that because it was a question that came in the chat. And chances are if one person has that question, there are probably 20 or 30 people, you know, between um, those that are live and those in the archives that are thinking the same thing. Okay, so what does it mean to buy a put? Well, when we buy a put, it gives us the right, but not the obligation. So what do I mean by that? It means that if the trade goes against us, we, we can walk away. Okay, so this is what it means to have the right to sell the stock at the strike at any time up until the expiration. And I found this hard to kind of wrap my head around, I'll be honest with you, when I first started. Um, the call side was more intuitive because we're used to the idea of buying a stock and having it go up as opposed to having the expectation that something's going to fall. So if you see a stock that's downtrending, and we're going to look at a couple of examples, and then it tries to rally for a couple of days, and then it falls again, and then it rallies for a couple of days, and then it starts to fall, we might say, you know what, it looks like this baby is going to continue to fall. So I am going to buy a put at 50 because I think it's going to continue to fall. So we buy this put at 50. How much do we pay for it? Maybe we paid two bucks, which is 200. So it's $2 a share. The multiplier is 100. And let's say we are correct and that thing continues to fall. And it comes all the way down just to make the math easy for me to 40. Well, if it comes down to 40, this gives me the right to sell the stock at what price? At 50. So I could go out, buy 100 shares at 40, and then turn around and sell them at 50. And what have I made? Well, I've made $1,000 because I bought it for 40. Now I have to take off the 200 that I had to pay to buy the put in the first place, but I'm up, you know, $800. And this is when people, their eyes get really big and they go, wow, that's incredible. Now, how often would this type of return, that would be like a 400% return, you know, which would have everybody, you know, dancing in the streets and popping the champagne or whatever. But, you know, if it falls, you know, we can do that. Now you might say, but Barb, I have a $3,000 account. 
I can't afford to buy $5,000 worth of stock. So, or $4,000 worth of stock. So does this mean I buying a put makes no sense to me? Well, no, because what some people do is, you know, what maybe many people do is they're buying a put and their goal is to sell the put for a profit. So this put would likely be worth at least $10 because it's trading $10 below the strike price. And if there's some intrinsic value, in other words, if the expiration date is still a month away, might be worth more than that. And so, you know, we could just buy it for two, sell it for 10, pocket the difference, which happens to come out to the very same amount, that $800. So you don't, you know, some people trade options and they never have the intention of exercising. Them. They just want to buy it, make a profit, and exit. Okay. Now, what if we're wrong and it goes up? It doesn't even have to go up by very much. What if it goes up to, you know, $52? If we're getting close to expiration, I have the right to sell it at 50 by buying this put. But why would anybody want to pay money for that if they could go out in the open market? And sell it for two dollars more so this would decline in value become worth less and ultimately it could be worth nothing so we could lose the entire premium so that would be a hundred percent loss but your risk is defined in that the most you can theoretically lose is what you paid to get in in the first place and so this would, you know, have you being sad over here, we'd be really happy. Okay, but what the goal is to take advantage of a downward movement in the stock's price. And this says swift in that, you know, this is time dependent. So if this expires in January, if the stock starts going sideways and lollygagging about, time is not our friend when we're buying an option. There's something called time decay and it is tick, tick, ticking, chip, chip, chipping away at the value of our option. So we'd like to get in, have it move down quickly and get out quickly in an ideal world. That's what we're looking for. Okay, are there any questions on that? Just let me take a second and look at the chat. Okay. Um, Okay, I think we're good. Okay, so if you look at the Analyze tab or use the Analyze tab on Thinkish Swim, this is what this would look like. So our max gain is, you know, potentially depending on what strike you bought, you know, some would characterize it as huge. It really is potentially very big because, you know, if we had our $50 example, and we paid $2 for it, and that thing went to zero, what would our net gain be? It would be $48 or $4,800. You might say, well, it's never going to go to zero. Well, never say never, but you know the probability might be low, but technically that's what your max gain would be. And what we're doing is using leverage and a risk-defined trading strategy to benefit from a stock that is moving downward. You know, if you short the stock, which we will not talk about in this class, you have unlimited risk. Um, and so, you know, we don't talk about trades in this class with unlimited, um, unlimited risk. Um, and our time frame, typically we're looking for something that is short or intermediate in, in term. Okay. And so you may be saying like, hey, where were you last year? Well, last year we did this type of trading strategy a lot in our long options class. And we had a very, typically a, a pretty short term horizon. But last year, you know, the S&P was down 18% and the NASDAQ was down 30. So there were lots of opportunities um, to use this strategy potentially. And, you know, how much could we lose? Again, we could lose the entire amount that we paid to get in, 100%. Um, and time, is time our friend or our enemy when we're buying an option? 
It is always our enemy. Time is our enemy. Now, volatility can negatively impact the price if volatility falls. But if volatility goes up, it's our friend. So what we want to do is buy an option when the volatility is low and sell it when it's high because volatility will pump up the price. Okay, so this is why some traders will avoid buying an option before earnings because there's something called volatility crush where right after earnings, all the volatility comes out of the balloon, so to speak, and, and volatility falls dramatically and that can have a downward impact um, on your, your price. Okay, and so what's the break even is the strike price minus the premium paid. All right. Okay, so if we were to create a trading plan, there are four components to a trading plan, um, four basic components, and there are some other things you might wanna throw in there as well, but you wanna know what to buy, when to buy, how much to buy, that's position sizing, and then when to exit the trade. And so this talks about the first two. So what do we wanna buy? Well, we're looking for a stock that is downtrending. So in trader speak, we call that bearish. You know, we wanna look at, at something that is falling in value or why do we say neutral? Because if something is going sideways, could we, you know, enter a trade here when it's it bounces, hits its head on resistance and starts to fall. So could we enter a trade here and, and buy it back here? Sell it there, yeah. So, sorry, I should have said sell it. So, so we're looking for stocks that have high trading volumes. And why do we care about that? Well, because we want the options to have high trading volumes. And on the Thinkorswim platform, that is open interest, number of contracts that were on the books when the market opened today. And volume is the number of contracts that have changed hands today. And then we care about that because we want liquidity. If we go to sell, are put, we wanna make sure that there's someone there who's interested in buying it. And the more options that are traded on our particular stock at that expiration and that strike, um, the more likely we can easily both enter and exit the position. And we wanna pay the market maker, not that we don't value what they do, but we wanna pay them as little as possible. And they're willing to take a small amount if they can take a little bit on a lot of contracts. If it's just you and the market maker, and he has to take the other side of the trade, he or she, they're, they're going to want a bigger piece. And then that just either it takes away from your profit or it adds to your loss. Um, and so we want to be aware of that. So these are things that when we go out to the trade tab, we are going to look for, right? Here, we're looking on the charts. Okay. And then with the other thing we're looking for on the charts is we want to see, is it breaking below support? So if it was here, it, you know, and we could say bouncing off resistance. So that's one piece. Or if it's breaking through support. So if it came all the way back down here and then maybe tried to rally and then broke through, if it gets all the way there, that's another entry, you know, breaking below support. Or if it's creating a bear flag pattern and that's, this this is the flag part you know because stocks don't tend to go straight down they go down they come up for a couple of days then they might go down try and rally again maybe hit their head on a 30 day moving average or a 50 day moving average and here we're looking for they call it a kablode a close below the low of the high day or some traders will look at that to confirm a trend continuation Okay, so why don't we go out to the platform and, and look for some of this? Because I think that's, you know, at least for me, that's when it made it seem the most real. So let's bring up the Thinkorswim. Actually, I have a, oh, and this is the kind of patterns that we're looking for here. So bull flag or bear flag where it's breaking below. Here's our close below the low of the high day. And, and you know, then we have it 
going sideways for a while and then breaking below a support level. So these are the types of patterns that we're looking for. And so let's come on out. Okay, now I want to start by saying if we look at the S&P, are we having a down year? No, we're up 17% and we've had quite the rally. Now today it's pausing. So today might not be the day that we would necessarily pull out our long put tool. And the same thing with the NASDAQ, it's up 45% year to date. Yesterday it hit a new one year high. So we, you know, but in this class, we're just going through all the tools and showing you how to use them. And, and one of the things when we went back to our list, you might be looking for not only a stock that's downtrending, but you, you're looking for a stock in a sector that's weaker and you're looking for the market maybe to be weaker. Not necessarily because even in an uptrend, you know, sometimes you, you can have five to 25 percent of the stocks moving to the downside. But overall, the trend of the market in general can still be up. So having said that, if we come and we lo look at Illumina, Illumina has been on the struggle bus. And so one of the things I would point out here is that, you know, when we look at this line here, just get my drawing tools going, you know, it is down 52% year to date. And if we look at, you know, just this month, it's down 12%. And, you know, here's our 200 day moving average. And again, if you want to see how I added all these things to my chart, you can go and watch that 10 minute mini session. Then there's, you know, it's below the 30 day moving average. And this is the 10 day moving average. So it's below all of those. And what it appears, you know, when we look at this, that this 10 day moving average has largely been acting as a ceiling. Like it, it tries to get above and then it falls again. And then, you know, it tries to come up and, and, you know, yesterday it was moving to the upside and it looks like it's falling again today. And so one of the things we could do, it's currently trading at what price? It's trading at 95.70. And in an average day, it, it moves over the last 14 days. And you can add this to your chart also. This tells us that over the last 14 days, on average, from the high of the day to the low of the day, it, it moves about $5.40. So if we looked at this and we said, well, the recent low was 89, what if we just did what we call a swing trade and said, what if it just went back to that previous low of 89? So could we buy a put and put in a target of the previous low? And the answer is yes, we could do that. So, and that really isn't much more, much further below than this stock moves in an average day. You know, at 95, it's, it's a little bit more, maybe $2, but how long might we expect it to take to get there? You know, our expectation is that it might get there in a few days. So we're going to come to the trade tab now. And then what was on our, you know, potential list for things we were looking for? Well, one was, here's Illumina. We wanted it to trade a million shares a day or more. Is it doing that? Yes. If we look at are at the money strike, which is 100. Actually, we'd want to be looking at this. Sorry, we'd want to be looking at this 95 strike here. We're on the put side. So it or the 90 strike, we could look at either one. So 95 is basically right about where it's trading now. Do we have a tight bid ask spread? And what did we say we wanted to see? Just as an example rule, I mean, you can make up whatever rules you want, but you know, the example was for it to be less than 10% between the bid and the ask. Here's our bid and our ask, and it's 30 cents. And, we, and it could be up to 45, 48 cents. So at 30 cents, are we okay? We're fine. 
And then here's our open interest. This is the number of contracts that were on the books when the market opened today. Well, how many of these are we going to do? You know, no more than one. So because, you know, in our trading a smaller account account, we don't want to risk more than about $500. So we would choose our 90 strike, which is the first strike out of the money. And we would go to January. Now, why go to January? Because, it, you know, if we look at the 95 and the 90 strike here, there's one more volume, um, a slightly tighter bid ask spread, and they're a lot cheaper, aren't they? 660 versus 410, but we have 24 days to expiration. And when we look at an option, in the three weeks prior to expiration, remember how I said time was not our friend? Well, it's not. And as we approach expiration, the rate of time decay goes up. And so it would be chipping away at our value, you know, at the value of this option at a faster pace. And if you want to see what that looks like, we can just bring up what we call the Greeks. And if we look at, say, December 1st, we can see that theta on that 95 option is at 14 cents a day on an option that would cost 245. Where if we come out to January, then it drops to nine cents a day. If we buy a little more time, now it's a little more expensive, but if we come out to January, it's six cents. Time decay is half of what it is on this December 1st option, less than half. And it's six cents on a bigger number. So while it may cost us more to enter the trade, there's going to be less damage from time decay. And so some traders will have a rule that if they think they're going to be in that trade for a week, they want at least three weeks plus the amount of time. And at 24 days, this doesn't give us much time, um, you know, before we're into the heavy hitting time decay. So this is why we're looking at the January option. And we're going to look at this 90. And I'm going to put this in this other account. And we are going to buy. And actually, we're going to buy custom with an OCO bracket. And why are we doing that? Because remember, we said we were going to put a target in. And so we're going to put a target in and we're also going to put in a stop. And what we're going to do is we're going to say, you know what? If this loses half its value, so it gets to the point where it's worth $2.40, it's not going in the right direction or it's not moving fast enough. Now, what about our target? Well, our target is going to be based on the stock price. And we don't know exactly what the option might be worth. Now, I can show you how we can estimate that. But we are going to come and click on that little disappearing, reappearing uh, sprocket beside best and bring up a conditional order and say, we only want to take um, to exit if this goes at or below 89 now, this is something you're going to want to watch. Like we've had cases where like it came to down to 89.15 and then it started to move back up. And so, you know, if it gets really close to 89, you may say close enough and go in and change your exit and decide to take the profit. This is not a set it and forget it type of trade. You're going to want to watch this pretty closely and it's pretty short term. So we want to buy a put because we're bearish, right? Right. And, 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 you know, I had a coach when I first started trading who said, I read these out loud to myself because sometimes you can skim things and you're less likely to make a mistake. So I'm buying a put that's bearish, right? Right. I want to sell it. If Illumina goes at or below 89, which was the previous low, it's currently trading at 95. So that's about a $7 move to the downside. Or if this option loses half its value, I want to exit. How much could I lose? $480. Am I okay with that? Yes. Um, what's my max profit? 8520 Okay. 
So, and that's if Illumina fell to zero. Well, what's the probability of that? Not high. Now, how do I know that? I can show you. So we're gonna put this in our long put group, and then we're gonna put a note in here from us to ourselves that just says that this is a swing trade target, a swing trade target. Fire in the hole. And you know what this is saying, hey, no guarantee that you're going to get out at the price you requested. If Illumina gapped up, um, you know, we could lose more than this 240. This is why we are basing our position sizing, which is the third component of a trading plan, right? Now, the fourth one is, you know, when are we going to exit? Well, we have our target and we have our exit. And then we might have a couple of mid-management rules with this strategy, and that might include, hey, if you have two up days in a row, I'm not going to wait for it to lose, you know, 50%. I'm going to exit because it's not going in the right direction. Or if I'm expecting it to move down, say, within, you know, five trading days, and it doesn't move down at least half the distance in half the time, I'm going to exit. And so those are our mid-management rules to keep us from taking a 50% loss unnecessarily. Okay, so we're gonna send that in. So I don't know why this didn't go in. It's saying it's missing quotes. Um, let's try it again. So we're going to do this 90. We're going to buy custom with an OCO bracket. I'm going to go kind of quickly this time. So 235. Good till canceled. Good till canceled. We're going to make that a market order. I don't know if it's just a glitch with the paper money. We want to get out when Illumina goes below 89. Okay. If you click below, then you'll see it come here. Less than or equal to 89. Save. We're doing one. Confirm and send. We want to buy a put at 470. We want to sell it when it goes below 89 or if it loses half its value, we're putting this in the long put group. This is a swing target. There we go. So it must've been just a glitch. Okay, so that's that one. Okay, I just want to over here. So, okay, let me just look at the questions here. So, Mike is saying he made the changes to his chart, but when he opened it today, the changes were gone. Um, once you've made the changes, they should stay. So, Mike, if that happens again, I would call the trade desk. Um, and Ken said that he's gone through this whole beginner series. Um, and you know what? I know people that have gone through it four or five times because the first time you go through it, like you don't know very much and it's like drinking out of a fire hose. And so then when you go through it the second time, you're picking up things. Sometimes I miss things in the beginning because I was so busy thinking about what the coach just said or trying to draw the line that he or she drew that, um, you know, I miss the next thing. So you know, it, I've had people go through this three, four, five, six times the whole series. Um, yeah, and somebody said, you know what? It does all start to come together once you go through it a few times. If you don't close the put and let it expire in the money, will it automatically put shares in your account? It will, it will, that, so that's a really good point. You do not want to let this expire in the money because if you ex if it expires in the money it will exercise your right chances are and and what is your right well it's your right let's come back here 
It's your right to sell the stock. So you will then have a short position. You will have shorted a stock. Now, depending on what account it's in, your broker may not allow you to do that. So thank you for bringing that up. And so they may immediately buy back this shorted stock. But if you shorted the stock, remember what I said? We don't talk about short, like selling stock short because you have unlimited risk. So you do not want to let this go into expiration and be exercised unless you're buying it as a protective put. And we talk about that in week 11. You know, so some people will buy a put as a means of protecting a stock purchase. That's not what we're talking about today. Same tool, totally different use. Yeah. Um, I just I just moved accounts just in case it was the account that was giving me the problem. Okay. Okay, so that's it. So do we do we want to look at another quick example? Okay, let's come to the trade tab. Um, and we'll look at BIIB, Biogen. Now, this is a biotech stock. And so some people will say these stocks tend to be volatile. So, you know, they choose not to trade them. And But if we look at this, it's down 15% year to date. It's down 2.7% this month. We look at this, it's below the 200 day moving average. It's been below the 30 most of the last, this is a six month chart, most of the last six months. And, you know, it's been flirting back and forth through the 10 day moving average, but you know, it's largely even been below the 10. And so you could say, but Earth to Barb, did you not notice that it's up today? Yes, I did. But, you know, could we put in a conditional order and say, hey, if it goes back below here, below this one, and that low was 228.13, could we put in a conditional order and say, hey, if it goes a dollar below that, if it goes to 227.13, I'd like to buy a put. You know, if it goes to 227 and I'd like to do the same thing, a swing trade back to that 2, 220, 86. So how would we do that? So that's one more kind of not fly in the ointment, but one more thing we have to consider. Now, the other thing is that this is a $200 stock. So we can't really afford to do a long put in our smaller account. So we're going to come over. We have a larger account just so we can show this as an example. We're going to do the at the money strike because it's closest to where it's currently trading. It's 230. So we're going to buy that. You can actually right click anywhere on this line. And we're going to buy custom with an OCO bracket, just like we did the last time. And then we're going to come down and make all three of these good till canceled. Why is that? Because remember, we don't want to place this trade right now. When do we want to place the trade? We want to place the trade if and only if Biogen goes below yesterday's low, which was 228.13 minus a dollar. So 227.13. So if it goes below 227.13, then we want to place this trade. So 227.13, save. So we want to enter this trade only if the stock goes below 227.13. And then we want to exit when? Well, when it hits the target, which was 220.86. So we're going to come to our trade tab again this we don't know exactly what this will be worth so we're going to come to market hit our sprocket say if this goes at or below this previous low 220.86 get us out okay and where's our stop well this option at 2.30, our 2.30, uh, that's December, it's about $8. So we can adjust this to make it 50%, but we're going to make our stop at what we 
you know, expect it might be, and we can, like I said, adjust this for 20. So we're, we're aiming for 50%. So we want to buy a put, which means we're bearish, right? Right. If and only if Biogen goes at or below 227.13, right now it's at 230.89, we want to exit that given we get in. If it goes below 220.86 or if it loses half its value, we're going to put this in our long put bucket and we don't have a bucket yet. So we're going to create one once the order fills. And unfortunately, that won't be today. Well, who knows? It could be today. Okay, so there's our swing trade that we've set up. See, it's something with this account is somehow, I don't know why, I'll have to look into that, that it wouldn't let us place this trade. So I will figure that out and I'll put this in so that we can follow up with it. But if we look back at our trade on Illumina, which we put in in this other account here. So what was our target on Illumina? It was the previous low, right? And I'm just going to show you this one last thing and then we'll wrap up. Our previous low was 89 and it's at 95. So it would have to drop almost $7. So if we come to the trade tab and we say, well, what if it did drop $7? What might it be worth? So this is Theo Price and Mark. And what you'll notice is that, that this pops up. And the first thing you do is hit reset. And then let's say it's oh, the market is open half a day on Friday. Let's say it hits our target on Friday. Now, it may and it may not. Might never hit our target. So if we say minus $7, that would take us to 88.71, just below the 89 we were aiming for. And then when we come over here and we're looking at January and we're looking at our puts. Sorry, we've been placing a lot of bullish trades lately, so my inclination is to go over to the call side. So when we come and we look at our position, which is showing here on the chart, this you know, trade that we paid, you know, around 450 to get in would be worth about $7.31. You know, and, and it's in that ballpark now of volatility changes, you know, it could make it worth more or less. If, um, if we don't get out on Friday and we get out on Monday or Tuesday of next week, time decay will have been chipping away. So this is just an approximation. But if you look at that and you say, well, 732 divided by 450, that would be a 63% reach gain uh, or return on our investment. And again, how much could we lose? Well, we put a stop loss in at 50%, but we could lose the entire thing, okay? So Theo price, it's, I thought it was the coolest feature on the planet. And then when I went to look at it again, I couldn't remember where to find it. I actually called the trade desk, but it's on the trade tab and you just click and change your layout. So that's how you can find that handy dandy tool. Okay, so just to wrap things up, let's come back to our PowerPoint. And I had, so sorry if I'm going through these quickly because I backed us up. Um, you know, we wanna look at strike selection. We talked about that. We talked about expiration dates. We talked about outlook and what we were looking for with respect to a, a downtrending continuation pattern. We talked about position size and assuming a max loss um, because that is a possibility. And then, you know, we looked at, you know, for a profitable trade, you might want to put a target in. Like we did the example of a swing target today. And we may want to adjust our stops as it gets closer to the target to reduce our risk. And if it's unprofitable, you know, we may say, hey, if it's down by 50%, we want to exit or, or have a stop in it. And if you make that decision before you place the trade, then you're less likely to let hope or fear or FOMO, fear of missing out, kind of play into it. Some might choose to trade this over earnings. Other might avoid earnings in corporate news altogether because it's just an additional level of uncertainty.
Okay. Okay. So guys, that is a wrap for today. Here's where, um, you know, I, I can make some special requests. And so the first one is hit the like button. It just, it moves this up in the algorithms on YouTube so that more people can find it. It's a chance for you to do a favor for a random stranger in helping this find this content. And that is how a lot of people who become fans of this have found it. It's just randomly on YouTube. So every like makes a difference. It also lets Lee and I know that you found this helpful. You'll want to also hit the subscribe button if you haven't done that. And, and and, and the stats are that 60 to 80 percent of you um, haven't subscribed to the channel. So it's free. Um, you know, it's not it, you can get notifications turned on if you want, but that's at your discretion. Um, and so and then you want to follow Lee and I on Twitter, Lee Bowl CS and at Barb Armstrong CS. So I think we've covered the basics of long puts, why some traders might find this to be an interesting strategy when they might choose to use it. We did two example trades, one on Biogen, ticker symbol BIIB, and the second one on Illumina, I-L-M-N. So guys, thanks for being with me for this last 45 minutes. Huge thanks to Lee Bowl for all he has brought to the table today as well. You guys have kept him busy. Um, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Up next is Brent Moores with Trading Flag Patterns. You'll want to join him for that. And tomorrow, if you'd like to join, join me for Trading Breakouts, we will be there at, I believe it's 1 o'clock Eastern. And last but not least, um, if I don't see you again, have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Um, this, uh, we will be off on Thanksgiving and we will be dark on Friday. So there will be no live webcast on Friday. Take care, everyone. Have a great day.